absolutely love upgrading the cooling on my devices. It can give you a bunch more performance or near silence of operation. And we have both of those for you today. This right here is Andy's M1 Max Studio Air because uh, the fan currently does not work. This thing gets 200 points in Cinebench multi-core, which is comparable to one core on an M5 or about a quarter of the performance that this thing should be getting. That is a pretty big problem when it's being used for ingesting all of our footage and editing our videos. It is dog slow. The other thing that we have is this Nanlite FC500B. This is a 500 watt light that we wanted to use right there, but instead we are currently using the 300 watt version because this one's a little bit on the loud side. Let me show you. Ah, yeah. It's, it's very bright, I like it. It is incredibly bright and the fan isn't particularly loud. I, you can probably hear it right now, but with how our set is set up, we have our microphone right here and our other light right there. So they are right beside each other. So we're hoping we can make this fan just a little bit more quiet so we can use this big old light and drop the ISO on our cameras. 500 watt, let's go. <laughs> there we go, holy crap. Hey, look at that. That took a while. Huge thanks to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. With the price of tech skyrocketing, while you're more and more encouraged to just throw it away, having resources and tools to repair your devices is more important than ever. iFixit wants you to give the gift of repair so you can use their tools to fix and improve your devices instead of just getting the newest thing. I'm personally a huge believer in the right to repair movement with iFixit being one of the biggest contributors to that with their tools, repair guides, and spare parts. Right now you can get up to 20% off select iFixit tools, so check them out at the link down below. If the fan on your Mac Studio is broken, all that you have to do is get a replacement one and put it in. Buying it is pretty easy, this thing was like 50 bucks, and replacing it is pretty damn difficult, cause uh, if you look at how this thing is designed, the uh, fans on the top and every single other part of the computer is in the middle there. Fortunately, iFixit does have a full guide on the process, so we will be following that. And the first step is to ruin all the adhesive underneath this little rubber foot here. There we go. Dang it. Apple and your stupid sharp edges. Yeah, I probably need a Band-Aid. There we go. Wow. Now we can remove four Torx T9s from the bottom, and of course, put them in a nice little parts tray. I like to just use the top of the iFixit kit to make sure that you don't lose any of your screws. Oh, that was easy. Wow. So this right here is the power supply for the Mac Studio, and we need to remove that now. If you want to add accessories to your Mac Studio, you can just get 12 volts from right here. Okay, Mr. Power Supply. Just need to disconnect a couple of things. There. Go. Here we have the 360 watt power supply and there's a bunch of capacitors here. You'd have to try pretty hard to hurt yourself while handling this, but I would not recommend like doing anything too crazy with it. Now we get to remove the internal frame using a T6. And there we go. Apple really loves having just a hundred different screw sizes. Zero regard for making it easy to get into these things. Here we have our SSD. You don't need to remove it for what we're doing, but it's always just fun to look at the internal bits of your computer. Oh, this was to keep track of the SSDs when I upgraded it. Yeah, I've 100% been in this Mac Studio before. This right here is realistically the scariest part of the whole operation. We have our Wi-Fi antennas right here, and these things absolutely love to snap when you take them off. So be incredibly careful when you do it. I'm just gonna come in here with this and pop it off. Yay, I didn't destroy it. Got all of them and didn't break it. Yay! Now the whole antenna can come out. This is how you get your Wi-Fi and such. Now we have to remove literally all of the I.O. because Apple. The I.O. on this is really good. It's just also very in the way. Although 10 gig doesn't matter too much when you're copying files with a CPU that is just thermal throttling to high hell. <laughs> you can just see it'll be like, all right, transfer speed, really high, and then it'll go from like 
six minutes to 30 as the whole thing just heat soaks and the CPU speed's like <laughs> Oh, these screws are annoying. Now we can remove the 10 gig port. What a wonderful thing that is. And now the speaker has to come out. I don't know if for the M1 Studio they had force canceling yet, so let's see. No force canceling at all, just one little speaker, nothing on the other side. But the amount of sound they can get out of this hilariously small little speaker is pretty impressive. And this is where having a guide is extra nice because all that I do need to do is just yank on it, but you don't always want to do that when you're not 100% sure that that's the way that you do it. <laughs> what we just removed is just simply some USB A's, HDMI, and your headphone microphone jack. Power gets removed. Now we get to take out the SD card reader, which is pretty similar to all of the rest of the IO. Just undo the screws, pull the thingy out. And there is our SD card reader. Very nice. Oh, are we almost done removing stupid IO? It's so silly seeing USB-C without the housing. It's just a little, little dingus. Oh, do I finally get to remove the main board? Wow, that is obnoxiously tight. What about? Uh, some pliers. Uh, I don't know if this is an iFixit sanctioned way to get more torque when you need it, but there we go. It works great. It might screw up your driver a tiny bit, but I've already done it like a hundred times. Wow, these screws smell incredible. They smell really good, yeah. Do you want to have a sniff, Andy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> awful. Andy doesn't like it. They've got that fancy Loctite that that's still stinky after many years Loctite. Oh, do I actually have to take out all of that IO over there? I don't want to. Hell yeah, here we go. Amazing. And we have finally gotten to our fans. This right here is what we need to replace. Looks like this is just three screws right here. There we go. And here is our new one. They look pretty much identical besides a couple of stickers that say techdep.com on the new one, but uh, oh, same OEM and everything. Yep, this should work great. I'm a big fan of my new fan. New fan going in, here we go. Oh, I guess before we do that, is there any dust in this? None, there's like no dust at all, wow. Apple, I guess, knows how to design a good system for not getting a whole bunch of dust in your device. There we go, easy as that. I'm just come over here, I'll make sure that I plug these in because if I forget that, that would be an absolute tragedy. The fan is plugged in, now should we do the responsible thing and fully assemble this and make sure it works or should we just move on to the light? Let's move on to the light. Yeah, I want to take the light apart. <laughs> Same. Now we get to blow apart a light that is literally brand new. I guess there's a whole bunch of screws on it. I'm just gonna start taking them out until it falls apart. This is a massive LED. Oh, that's a big heat sink. Holy crap. 10 heat pipes. Holy crap. <laughs> and that is a great big cold plate there. <laughs> that's, that's pretty sweet. Does this just come off now? Oh, it does. The whole thing comes apart. We had to get out the good old Noctua screwdriver that comes with all of their heat sinks in order to get this off. This entire thing basically is just a heat sink. There is our fan. Look at that. They just used a completely standard 120 millimeter fan. So replacing it with one that's a bit better balanced should be no trouble at all. I found the specs of this fan right here and it does have a little bit more airflow than our Noctua but not so much that I think it's going to be a problem. The static pressure is about the same between the two and also the Noctua is 13 dB quieter, which is absolutely massive, especially given how close our mic and our light are. Now, Nanlite didn't use a typical PC connector because they probably don't expect people to be, you know, swapping out the fans on their lights, but that is not a problem because we have the iFixit soldering station. This guy right here can do eight hours of continuous soldering and the kit comes with literally everything that you need for your soldering adventures. Okay. Oh, f Oh no. Oh, oh, our life just got so much harder. It looks like it's waxed together. The whole connector came off. So that's gonna be fun. Fortunately, the one that pulled out is the least important. Oh, there we go. Now you can just go back on there, Mr. Connector. No one needs to know what happened. Perfect. Well, I guess it's the point of no return right here. Haha. -ha. Now we just chop my Noctua fan. 
Now was Noctua nice enough to label these for me? Okay, so black is ground, yellow is 12 volt, tachometer is green and PWM is blue. So we don't need to worry about blue. We just need to worry about these three right here. I don't know if the light has no fan control or if it just simply changes the voltage, which is entirely possible as well. It goes up to 420 Celsius. Nice. nice. Let's get some solder in the air in Andy's house. I hope you don't destroy our new table. All right, now red needs to go to yellow. Nice bit of solder. Now I just need to use Andy's absolutely awful barbecue lighter. <laughs> you can put this directly beside a whole bunch of propane in your barbecue and it may or may not light it. I really want to test this before we put it fully back together, but I also really do not want to turn this on with it blown apart. I think it's a terrible <laughs> idea. Yep. Will it be able to shrink this heat shrink enough so that it looks okay? Probably not. Probably not. We have made such a mess. Now this gets plugged back in right there. Very nice, and I need to attach this. There we go. Holy crap. Hey, look at that. That took a while. That's enough back together to test, right? I think that'll be fine. Still access the stuff that we need to if it doesn't work. Fan works! Wow! And she's freaking bright! Haha! <laughs> 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 Okay, I do have another 500. Do you want to compare it? Uh, sure. Thank you, Nalai, for sending all those 500s. So for comparison, here is the stock one, because we still have one that we haven't modified. Kind of loud. It's not too bad, but it's certainly audible. Like, you can hear it. Compared to... Oh, that is basically silent. That is so freaking good. I am pleased with myself. Wait a second. I think I put this together upside down. So see, fans here. That's the bottom. Handles down here. On this one that I just put together, fans up here, handles right there. Hey, it still works. It does still work. I'm gonna flip it around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we caught that. <laughs> and now every single capacitor in here is charged. Great. All right, just one more little test, just once it's all together to confirm that this works. Fan turn, oh my oh god, my that's god. bright. <laughs> and then the fan speed will go down. Yep, just like that. And it works awesome. Let's put back together our Mac Studio. This hopefully will be very uneventful. We're almost there. And there we go, the Mac Studio is back together and shockingly, I don't have a single screw left over. So I think we did a good job. Put this little foot back right on here. Let's see if I was able to put this thing back together correctly. You muted the dong, Andy. That's the entire reason you buy an Apple product. So far, so good. Where is Cinebench? Okay, we have Mac fan control open. Full blast. Hey! Oh, she's working! Wow, and that's actually kind of loud. I guess you never use full blast ever, but <laughs> it did literally nothing before. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. Let's see the Cinebench. <laughs> well, we can't see the Cinebench because freaking a thousand programs are opening <laughs> right now. Oh my God. Annie, you need to turn off your login services. Uh, yes. Google? Nope. Gemini? Nope. Whatever the frick this is. Nope. Okay, here's the true test. Before a multi-core, we got a Cinebench score of 213. What can we do now? All right, how are we doing here? Final score of 678 points. Honestly, I was hoping for a little bit more, but that is an absolutely massive improvement. The reason that this probably isn't quite where I wanted it to be is because Andy has hella background tasks and Try as we might, I, I feel like something else is still just happening, but from 213 to 678, 
That is absolutely massive. This is gonna feel like a brand new machine for editing and ingesting. I'll do a system refresh. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, I think we can call this a huge success. Let us know down below if you want to see more videos like this, where we're just, this is kind of what we'd be doing anyway. We needed to do both of these projects and we decided to film it. Also, huge thanks for watching. Hit like, get subscribed, and of course, have a great old day. Our Patreon is the best way to support us and make sure that we can continue to do stupid stuff like putting a knock to a fan in the light. See you later.